hey y'all welcome or welcome back to another video if you're new oh hold on <laughs> if you're new welcome my name is Alexis. today's video is another medical assistant video but it's a little bit different i'll be doing a sit down chit chat type video about it things to know pros and cons so stay tuned and let's get straight into the video So you want to be a medical assistant. We've been doing research on Google, on YouTube, looking for things to know, pros and cons, days in the life. Well, if that's you, this video is for you. Okay, so I want to start with the pros because I want to start out on a good note. So the first thing that I appreciate about being a medical assistant is getting experience in the healthcare field without a huge commitment in school. So when I first became a medical assistant, I went through my local community college. There was a program that was just four months long. It was free and I was given a $1,000 reward after successfully passing the course and um, taking the exam and passing that as well. I was working at the time, so I would go in from like 8.30 to five and then get off work and then like, let's say like three days out of the week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I would have class from like six to eight every day for four months. So I was hustling, but that's what I did. And it was really quick and it was over before I knew it. And I got my foot in the door. It's one of these careers in the healthcare field that help you get your foot in the door. And that's what I really appreciate about being a medical assistant. The next thing I appreciate about being a medical assistant is the skills that I've learned. So I've only been a medical assistant for about three years and I've learned so much already clinically and administratively. So here's a little backstory. My interest in the medical assistant field um, started when I became a front desk receptionist, basically at a primary care office. I worked at the front desk answering phones, checking patients in, scheduling appointments, taking messages, sending letters, all that stuff. And eventually I shared my interests with the clinical side of things with my manager and she went ahead and got me cross-trained like ASAP. I'm not really sure exactly what intrigued me at the time. I was already a certified pharmacy technician, so I had a little bit of experience in the healthcare field. When it came to administering vaccines and just knowing about medications and stuff like that, but of course I didn't know, you know, all the things that I know now. And at the time I wanted to be a physician assistant. That was the end goal. That was my dream career. So of course you need um, hands-on patient care. So I figured, you know, I definitely needed to do something to get me some patient care hours. So before I even started the program at my local community college, I got cross-trained within my job and I learned things such as how to give vaccines and other injections, how to take a blood pressure, how to do a vision test, a hearing test, A1Cs, EKGs, COVID swab, some phlebotomy, cleaning and wrapping wounds, ear irrigation, applying casts and arm sling, and computer stuff such as like inputting the chief complaint, vitals, medical history, allergies, doing prior authorization, sending in e-scripts, putting in orders like mammograms and colonoscopies and, and et cetera, all that stuff. Some of that stuff I learned in the within my job but the majority of the stuff i learned from the program that's my experience so far with being a medical assistant and learning all the things that i know now so the next thing i appreciate about being a medical assistant is the ability to specialize even though i worked at a primary care office there were a lot of times that we were required to float to other offices due to call outs or shortages and stuff like that the company i worked for had lots of offices not just primary care. So I got experience in ear, nose, and throat, which is ENT, podiatry, gastroenterology, pediatrics, cardiology, urgent care, OBGYN. Even though you have the ability to specialize, I would definitely recommend starting out in the primary care field. I feel like it's the best way to get the foundation down packed before you wanna specialize and learn a whole bunch of other stuff, you know, within that specialty. It's also a lot more fast paced in specialty offices versus primary care. So if you're fresh out of school or fresh out of a program and you're just starting out as a, as a medical assistant, I would definitely recommend um, starting out in primary care first. You don't want to go into a specialty only because 
you'll be struggling. <laughs> you'll be struggling because you have to learn all the foundational stuff that you just learned in your program on top of all the stuff that the specialty requires. For example, when I was an OBGYN, um, this is even after I had all the experience that I have. When I was an OBGYN, I had to learn more stuff, stuff that I never like like knew anything about before. Like I had to memorize what weeks pregnant women had to get certain injections or certain vaccines and you know, what to do for certain appointments, how to lay out, you know, certain materials and surgical type items for, for certain appointments or what to put out for the provider when they're about to take out a freaking IUD or something like that. Like I had to learn like a lot more stuff than I had to learn in primary care. So I, and it was very fast paced. So it took me a very long time to catch on. Um, so, I mean, yeah, you'll get paid more working in a specialty, not gonna lie, you'll get paid a lot more, but even if you are working in a specialty, if you just got out of school, no experience, whatever, they're still gonna try to play you and you're not gonna get paid as much as everyone else is anyway. So you might as well start out in primary care anyway. The next thing I appreciate about being a medical assistant is the flexibility. So although I've only worked the traditional nine to five, Monday through Friday, I have heard of um, opportunities to, to be like a travel medical assistant. There's also the opportunity to work three 12s, so three 12 hour shifts out of the week so you have the other four to yourself there's also four tens you can work four days out of the week and have uh the other three days to yourself you just work four 10 hour shifts those opportunities are usually only available in like urgent care settings or hospital settings but the fact that they're just available period is what i really appreciate the next thing and probably like my favorite thing about being a medical assistant is having impactful work or being able to make a difference in someone else's day. One thing I'll say that you'll have the opportunity to do in this field is make a difference in someone else's day. There are a lot of times when patients are coming in for results or they're coming in for a surgery or they're coming in due to health problems and they're just not in the best mood. Like most people who are coming in, you know, to the doctor's office, aren't coming in, you know, just to come in. I mean, some people are, you know, just to get like routine checkup, checkups or whatever, but most people or a good amount of people are coming in because of health issues. And so they're already not, you know, having the best day or having the best time. So I feel like my role in that in that situation is to, to help, you know, bring up their spirit a little bit. You're not really the first point of contact when they come in the office, but you are the first point in contact when they come inside that um, exam room. So I feel like um, you kind of set the tone for the whole visit in a way. And a lot of times, I'm not going to lie, unfortunately, I work with some providers who just weren't good. Like they weren't really the most personable. Um, they didn't really listen to their patients. They didn't really take the time out to understand what's going on. And like, just like, they just didn't really do a lot to ease the situation when it came to patients who were who were concerned about their health. Some of the providers that I worked for kind of like rushed the appointment only because they, you know, they have to see like a certain amount of patients a day due to bringing in more money to the uh, company or whatever. And I'll get in, I'll get more into that later. But yeah, like a lot of patients aren't seeing providers that are, you know, truly like compassionate. Being that you're that first point of contact and that you are the one that generally sets the tone for the appointment you have that opportunity to connect with the patient, to listen to the patient, to offer any advice that you can that's within your scope of practice, um, you know, stuff like that. And that's what I did. And my patients loved me. Like my patients were probably in the room with, with me longer than they were with, in the room with the provider. And um, sometimes I had to like be walking out the door while I'm talking to them because they couldn't stop talking to me. <laughs> I just received like numerous compliments and a lot of people just saying thank you and I just be like what are they thanking me for and I think it was just them thanking me for having that conversation with them or giving them you know more insight into what's going on in their situation like that's another thing about being a medical assistant a lot of people think oh you're a medical assistant you don't know too much I'll get into that somewhere later as well but they think you're a medical assistant you don't know too much or whatever but they don't understand that we had to go through a program for a reason we had to learn the things that we know for a reason and um, it's, it's not, you know, as much as the providers know, but it's definitely something. And like, it's, it's simple things like blood pressure that people don't know about. Like they don't know, you know, what foods cause what to happen or what medications interact with others or what, in, what medications may be causing certain side effects that are, that they're experiencing and stuff like that. And so when you're able to offer them that information, um, cause sometimes the providers, they don't, 
the ones usually the ones who aren't listening they don't inform the patient of the possible side effects like for example like atorvastatin the statin medications they cause leg cramps like they cause you like to have like leg pain every time i see that a patient's on atorvastatin and they start talking about leg pain or you know stuff like that that's the first thing i inform them about and a lot of times they're just like oh no one told me about this so i don't know i just feel like it's just it, it feels really good to be able to not only like listen to someone and be able to make a difference, you know, in their day, but also to just like make a difference in their health by offering them information that they may not have known or offering them information that the provider, you know, may have forgot to mention or stuff like that. Next thing and the, the last pro that I appreciate about being a medical assistant is the ability to advance in your career. Being a medical assistant is not as financially rewarding as most other healthcare careers, but you do have the opportunity to advance. And the way you can advance is through like taking lead positions, um, taking on more responsibilities. There's definitely some companies that do offer lead positions. Like the company I'm working for right now, there is a lead MA and yeah, she obviously gets paid more than the rest of us. And yeah, like you just have to ask, you just have to ask more questions. You just have to like, to do the research and everything like that. And when you get the opportunity to level up or to advance in your career, um, make sure that you are negotiating your wages. Make sure you're not like just allowing them to tell you what they're gonna pay you. Make sure you are, you know, setting out all the evidence of how, you know, how beneficial this role will not only be for you, but also to the company. You have to advocate for yourself basically. But yeah, there's definitely opportunities to advance. All right, so now that we're done talking about the pros, it's time to move on to the cons. <sighs> so one of the cons uh, that are unfortunately a part of being a medical assistant is not being as respected as your counterparts. And whether that be by the patients or by like providers or nurses or whatever, you definitely can feel the difference about how you're talked to and treated and stuff like that. If you go into this field, definitely be prepared for some nurses and some providers to look down on you um, just because it's like one of those entry level positions, just like any other job. And you know, they expect you to not know as much. They expect you to not be as valuable as a healthcare professional as you know other jobs maybe. And I'm not saying they'll be like outright disrespectful, but a lot of it is like subtle. They might like undermine you. Like I remember like I was uh, trying to get a provider to send in a refill medication for a patient. And we were going back and forth because the provider can understand why the patient needed a refill sent in again when they just sent in the refill. And it was because the, the patient wanted it sent to a different pharmacy because they were having a hard time finding the medication or whatever. And I don't know, the provider was just giving me a hard time. And then in the message, one of the messages the provider put, oh, maybe we can get an, an RN or, LP, or LPN to help out with this um, for further clarification. What? Like, excuse me? <laughs> that really pissed me off, not gonna lie. I was heated because that was so unnecessary, but I have a way with words, so I fixed that situation. But yeah, it's, it's pretty common. Not all of them are like that. I met some really sweet, really nice, really, just really sweet providers who, who are respectful regardless of like your position in the healthcare field. There's also some patients that may prefer the doctor to take their blood pressure instead of you or prefer the doctor to give them a vaccine instead of you only because they just, you know, they just trust the provider more for whatever reason. And honestly, like I don't get offended in those situations. Um, our job is to make the patients feel more comfortable. So um, if that's something that they were they request, just do it. I mean, it's it's them. That's that's them getting the blood pressure taken. That's them getting the vaccine. You can't you can't take things too personally, like you know, in general, period. But especially like in the healthcare field and dealing with patients, you can't take things too personally because everyone everyone is an individual. Everyone experiences life differently. Everyone sees things a little bit differently. Um, and yeah. Moving on, the next con is the pay being on the low end um, for our field. I feel like companies kind of capitalize on this. Not gonna lie, I feel like like every company I've worked for so far, like the ratio for medical assistants to nurses or medical assistants to LPNs or whatever, RNs, LPNs, it would be way more medical assistants than LPNs and RNs. And then like every time when I was, I was with a company for, I don't remember how long, but I was with one of the companies for a couple of years. 
and I really had to fight hard to, to get these pay increases. Like they tried to give me more responsibility without giving me the pay that I feel like I deserved. And I advocated for myself. I ended up leaving with like um, three or four dollars more than I started with. So that's good. But um, still like don't stay with a company too long either. That's another piece of advice I can give you. That's for any career. Don't stay with a company too long because they start to take you for granted. Definitely go and see what other companies are talking about and get what you're worth. But that's not necessarily a bad thing, I guess, because at least there's more job opportunities out there for medical assistants. But like I said, companies capitalize on the fact that they can pay us less and, you know, less than LPNs and less than nurses and stuff like that. So definitely keep that in mind. Another con to being a medical assistant or working in the healthcare field period is the possibility for exposure to pathogens. I just really wanted to leave this as a reminder. Although the risk is fairly low if you're in implementing uh, the proper procedures and the proper safety practices that you've been taught within your you know, medical assistant program or whatever, um, if, you're, if you're doing what you're supposed to do, basically the risk is very low, but there are mistakes. They're called mistakes for a reason or accidents for a reason. And it is a possibility. So that's just definitely something to keep in mind, especially if you like already have like health conditions and stuff like that. That's definitely something you want to keep in mind. But me, I always wear gloves when coming in contact with any type of like bodily fluid, such as such as urine or, or blood or any type of like bodily fluids. Um, when I'm giving vaccines, I wear gloves. I don't like, I don't recap the needle. If I have to recap the needle, because it's not one of those ones that you have to like, it's not one of those ones that you can just like click the button and it caps itself. Then I place the cap on the table and then I slide the needle into the cap. And that's how I, you know, I make sure the needle is in there before I like, you know, snap it shut. And I immediately put it in that red, um, that red container. I forgot the red, the red hazardous container. Um, but yeah, I have never, thankfully, like, um, fingers crossed, knock, knock on wood, I've never had a situation where I've accidentally been stuck by a needle or accidentally been like exposed to any type of pathogens. The most I've probably gotten from working in a uh, working as a medical assistant is uh, COVID. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. The next con to being a medical assistant, really just working in general, is the possibility of stress and or burnout. I feel this happens a lot in the healthcare field. One reason may be because over time you're getting closer to your patients and they're going through things and you know, you may take some things home with you that you're not supposed to be doing. Leave work at work, like don't bring that stuff home. You know, whatever patient said to you or whatever the patient was diagnosed with, that can quickly lead to burnout. When you when you get home, when you, as soon as you step in that door, any everything about work just needs to disappear out of your brain yeah i feel like a lot of burnout can just be from like working on so many tasks at work i feel like we're all like multitasking we're doing multiple things at once i'm coming out of out of a room from rooming a patient and the provider's coming out of a room at the same time she's asking me to go in there to give a vaccine i have to keep the provider moving from room to room because they're on a certain schedule and they have a certain amount of time that they're allowed to be in a room with the patient. So I have to keep that in mind while I'm preparing the vaccine to go give to another patient that she just asked me to give a vaccine to. And at the same time, sometimes you don't get time at the end of the day to like catch up on all your computer stuff. So you have to do that in between rooming patients and getting vitals and giving vaccines and all that stuff. So it can lead to burnout very quickly. So that's why I'm saying like when you get home, you just have to like brush it off and like find ways to just like let, release that stress. A lot of times you may be the bearer of bad news um, when it comes to like giving results and stuff like that. And that can also like put weight on you when you're having to deal with, on you know, telling a patient on the phone, like, you know, their lab results and they're just like asking you questions and, you know, maybe they're crying. I've dealt with patients who are crying on the phone. Like it's hard, like it gets hard. Like it gets really real sometimes. And you just like, you go home and you're just like thinking about like, oh my God, like I need to go see my doctor. I need to make sure I'm okay. Like it just, it gets really stressful sometimes, but you just have to like know how to separate the two, separate, you know, work and life basically. The next con that I mentioned earlier that you may notice while being a medical assistant and working in the healthcare field is that patients aren't getting the care that they need. In many cases, you may feel that patients aren't being heard or getting the care that they need, whether it be because they're voicing that to you or because, or you might just be seeing some things. And if you see some things, say something like, Mention it to your manager, mention it to someone 
um, who has the power to make a difference or mention it to someone who has the power to, uh, to do something about it. You'll never be punished for reporting something in good faith anonymously. Whether it's a provider or, or coworkers you're working with, whoever, you can always report something that you're seeing that's not being done right. I remember um, I had a provider who uh, was seeing a patient. A patient came in and they were having like chest pain and just like complications as far as like, as far as like their blood pressure was high, chest pain and stuff like that. And instead of having me go in and do an EKG and, and doing stuff like that, um, like the typical protocol, they sent them out the door and told them to go see their cardiologist. And so, yes, I reported that. I reported that to my manager immediately because I was waiting. I was like, okay, she's going to ask me to do an uh, EKG. But the uh, appointment was already going over a little bit when I had, uh, I think the patient showed up late or something like that. And I didn't have, uh, I didn't want to take up too much time in the room. So I was just like, I'll do an EKG after she comes out of the room from talking to them. Um, and I'll go in there and do that. And when she came out the room, the patient was walking out the door. And I was like, oh, you don't need me to do an EKG? And she was like, no, uh, they're going to go see their cardiologist. And I was like, what? Like, excuse me? So, and you know, it's crazy because a lot of specialties like cardiology, it's hard to get into. You take a while to even like, to even get an appointment. So I was just like, this is crazy. Like this patient came in having chest pain, their blood pressure is high, all that stuff and not even EKG. So yeah, anyway, I reported that to my manager and they, you know, they took note of that and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, if you see something, say something. Like I said, you'll never get in trouble um, for reporting something in good faith anonymously. And you know, sometimes, you know, everyone makes mistakes and sometimes maybe the providers might be doing something um, or not doing something by mistake. And, you know, you might can just talk to them or whatever. It just depends on your relationship with the provider. Cause you know, a lot of providers don't like hearing or being told what to do or anything like that from someone who doesn't have a doctor's degree or whatever. So um, if you have that type of relationship with your provider where you can like offer some insight or offer some advice, then yes, do that. But sometimes it's not always like intentional. So keep that in mind as well. The next con and final con that I have, that is something you'll experience wherever you work, honestly, you've probably already experienced it by now if you've been working, period. But it's just rude people, rude patients. Don't think because it's an, a professional environment or because you're at a doctor's office that, per, that patients aren't gonna be like rude or sassy or whatever you wanna call it. It happens all the time, like for whatever reason, like maybe it's because they're just having a bad day, period. Maybe that's just how they are. Um, Maybe because they don't even want to be there. A lot of patients, like, they won't get medication refills because they haven't been seen in, like, six months or a year. And then they'll have an attitude because they got to come into the appointment. <laughs> they have to come into the office to get a freaking refill. So they'll have attitude with that. And just don't take it personally. Like I said, just brush it off. Like, move on. You know, that's them. It has nothing to do with you. A lot of the times, it has nothing to do with you. That's pretty much it for this video, you guys. Um, I don't have anything else to say about this at the time. If you feel like um, there's anything else you would like to add, please feel free to do so in the comments. Um, I just wanna make sure that everyone is aware of you know, what they could possibly be expecting coming into this type of field. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the end of the video and I appreciate you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like, don't forget to comment if you have any questions, concerns, or anything to add. I love y'all and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.